Hey guys, welcome to an episode of Michigan Fishing. I haven't been able to do a video in a while because I've been doing a lot of hunting lately. And I actually quit my season about a month earlier than what I should have because I was going to do deer hunting. And so we're just going to do a couple of videos, probably try to get five or six, but we'll probably only get two or three. But this one's going to be on my rods that I use for bass fishing right now. Actually, the day after Christmas this year, 2011, I'm going to go down to Cabela's and get a another ducket rod. Seven foot heavy for frogging and for heavy cover pitching. I'll get into uh, more details of that later in another video. And I'm going to get a Shimano Corrado with it. So let's go over the rods I use right now. This is a Cabela's Prodigy, six foot six, medium heavy. This is for spinner baits. And then I have a Quantum Smoke on it, the 100 series. This guy, EVA foam grips. And um, it's micro guides. This rod is extremely, extremely light. I would suggest getting this rod if you want a $100 rod. Real cheap. It's better. Everybody says you want the Veritas or something like that for $100. Well, right here is where it's at. This will smoke a Veritas any day. I don't care what you think. Even the micro guide one that's new. And then I can throw worms on this because it's 6'6". Six six. They say you should get a 6'6 six six if you're throwing worms. because, And that's like Roland Martin says that because you can get, you get the most action out of the worm. With a seven foot, that's about the next best thing. And uh, normally I don't throw worms on it though because I don't normally have the light, right line for it. I normally just use spinner baits and use like 17 pound mono. And this, it's just real hard to use worms with it with uh, everything I have set up for spinner baits. And then you can throw weights in the back, even an hour if you're using something real heavy because it's an extremely light rod. And then the reel is extremely light because it's like six ounces and the rod's like just over it's like three so it's under it I would say that's under 11 ounces to be exact here is a ducket seven foot medium it's a cranking rod it's for square bills and then it's for lipless crankbaits and like six to ten foot crankbaits and uh, I got it paired up with a Akuma Clara and I use 10 pound mono on it. I don't use fluorocarbon. It's not, it doesn't get as much stretch to it. And uh, normally when I'm using a, this rod with crankbaits, I'm moving my crankbaits pretty fast, so it don't really matter. And then the rod, every, everybody knows ducats. They're amazing. I'm getting, that's what I'm getting another one of. Split grip, everything. It's perfect. I got a rod review video on this. And then this, I haven't done a rod review video on yet. I got it at the end of the season last year and I just used it once or twice. It's a Skeet Reese micro guide football jig and big worm rod. I use it for football jigs and big worms and then I also use it for pitching. Like not heavy cover pitching but like scattered grass, um, secluded cover, vertical cover, nothing real heavy. So I use 15 pound P line on it. That's a copolymer line. Then I got backing on it which is like 14 pound trilene mono and then I got a Eva Garcia or SX on it that's the 6 4 to 1 gear ratio this is a 7-2 rod I think it, it doesn't say because they're technique specific specific but I think it's a medium heavy I would say um, this fall when it got real real cold up in Michigan here because it got cold pretty fast here for like a week straight I was pitching to an island that, because the pond that I fish at has an island and it's vertical. I was pitched on the end of it and I had probably, I, not, no exaggeration, probably 15 foot of slack in the line. And I still felt the fish just suck it in and sit there. So I had to reel down really, really fast and set the hook. And I got him in and it was right in the roof of his mouth just like it should be. And it was, it was perfect. I couldn't believe how sensitive it is. I would say it's sensitive as a ducket, to be honest with you. And here is one of my spinning applications. This is for just drop shot and one eighth ounce jigs. Really light one eighth ounce jigs that I use. Um, I use it in uh, spring and then fall on cold fronts. Normally you want big baits, slow, big moving baits in fall when it gets really cold. But a lot of times when it gets you get that cold front in, it's real nice to throw a really small jig with a KVD chunk on it. Works great. And this is a seven foot medium light Shimano Claris with a P Fluger President XT on it. 
real nice rod great it's got a nice tip for drop shot I also have a rod video on this I believe or a drop shot video and then I talk about the rod that's real good I normally do fluorocarbon on this and that's uh I think you do 12 pound fluorocarbon on that and then you guys are all gonna laugh at me for this one because this is a Berkeley lightning rod I found it down by the creek one year and I waited like two days for somebody to pick it up and no one did so I just took it I actually use this for skipping docks and you guys are gonna laugh at me because you should use if you're really good and you're serious and you know what you're doing you can skip with bait casters which I do the reason I skip docks with this is if I'm using baits under one eight ounce I'm talking real tiny finesse baits real small like Cinco's little uh, Gary Yamamoto's little stuff like that that's what I skip with this other than that it's a bait caster because I just don't I like skipping with the bait caster it's more precise you know like a lot farther pitch but these are this is what I use for real light and then I also use it for steelhead because it's fun and I use ultralights for steelhead and then I use it for salmon salmon too just like I do with ultralight this is you've seen this in my other videos this is a Fenwick Eagle GT, six foot six, medium fast tip. It's a real strong rod, but it's got, I mean, the tip, it's pretty stiff. So, but yeah, it's still got enough bend in it. It's not like a, it's not like my skeet where you've got all that bend in it. It's not like that, but or my uh, Prodigy, but it's real nice rod. It's actually the guides are actually pretty small for conventional guides. And it's like a seventy dollar rod, real tip, real tip, retail. And then this reel is actually on it first, the uh, RSX, and I just took it and put it on the skeet because it has the gear ratio for what I like. It's not split grip, nothing like that. It's pretty simple, straight up, and it's real, it's real light. I'd say it's probably, it's probably high fours, four ounces. If this was split grip, it'd be down to like, it'd be close to my prodigy and it's real thin for medium heavy too and so is the prodigy and you got a hook keeper and then uh exposed reel seat it's real it's nice i'm gonna take this and put a cheap reel on it i'm gonna put a every garcia black max on it and take it up north and this is just gonna what i'm gonna use up north because i used to take all these rods up and fish up north but um one time an accident happened and I had to return two of my rods and get new ones. So I said I'm done with it. I'm just going to grab this and I'll put a cheaper reel on it and I'll throw braid on it and grab fluorocarbon and I can pretty much, pretty much with this rod and that reel and line, you can fish pretty much any application you want, especially up there because a lot of up there is crankbait fishing, deep crankbait fishing, spinnerbaits, um, frogs, and worms. That's about, and you can pretty much do all that on this because this isn't, it's got a paralytic belt bend in it, but yet it's kind of fast. If you look on the website, it says medium fast tip or moderate fast tip, so I can pretty much throw anything on it. And then, uh, yeah, those are the rods I use for now. And I'm getting a new one. So stay tuned for more episodes, and we'll get back to you.